What's going on guys and girls, Static here and welcome to another in-depth Minecraft tutorial where I show you how to build something cool and then try and explain to you how and why the thing actually works. Today I'm pretty excited to be doing this tutorial because we're going to be building what you can see in front of us here. This thing is an automatic uh, super smelter or an industrial furnace array or what I'm referring to as the blast furnace and this particular one here is actually the blast furnace that I built in the recent quick build video where we built this thing in less than five minutes. Uh, so if you do have a pretty decent grasp on uh, redstone or if uh, you've got a little bit of a short attention span, I definitely recommend checking out that quick build as in less than five minutes you'll get pretty much all the information you'll need to replicate one of these. Uh, however, there are a couple of uh, little novel mechanics going on here and a few... Uh, interesting little quirks of the machine that I'm going to explain throughout the tutorial. So if you've got the time, definitely hang around. So furnace arrays like this definitely aren't a new design in Minecraft. In fact, they've been around for almost as long as hoppers have been in the game. And this design itself was actually inspired by a couple of other designs and uh, little tutorials here and there. So I'm going to link all of the videos that inspired or informed this video down the down in the description and in the credits section at the end of the video. So if you get a chance, definitely give those a look as they're all pretty short, informative and entertaining. But for those of you who haven't seen one of these industrial furnace arrays before or who aren't entirely sure what it's used for, the basic idea of the machine is that it divides all of your ores and in this particular version, all of your fuels up between a series of furnaces. And by dividing those fuels and ores equally, uh, you divide the, the workload up between the furnaces, which means they chew through them a lot quicker, and you can get through entire chests full of resources in no time at all. The problem with these designs is that generally they take up a lot of iron. Uh, this design is no different. It does take a fair bit of iron, but compared to other designs out there, it takes a lot less. The cheapest minecartless furnace array that I was able to find on YouTube uses three hoppers per furnace on top to divide the ores, one hopper per furnace underneath for the auto collection mode, and generally didn't come with anything for sorting out the coals. You had to do that manually. Uh, you can see with this design though that I've managed to cut it down so that it only uses two hoppers per furnace on top to divide the ores, two hoppers per furnace on the side to divide the coal, and one hopper per furnace underneath for the collection mode. So because we were able to cut down uh, on one hopper per furnace on top here, that meant for only one hopper per furnace extra, we were able to add in coal sorting as well, which is pretty handy. Now this design isn't necessarily as hands-free as those other slightly more expensive designs, but we'll get into that in a little bit. It's not really that much of an issue. And it does come with a bunch of the features that the other designs have. So for example, we've got indicator lights here on the front, which also serve a purpose, which again we'll get into later. And you've got an XP mode down the front here. So you can see those torches there. That means that those uh, auto collection hoppers are currently locked. So this is an XP mode, meaning you can take the the uh, finished products out yourself to get the XP and you can switch them off simply like so. Another cool little faux feature of this design is that it's actually it actually seems mechanical uh, which was something that I was going for when I designed this thing. I wanted it to actually look like a working machine and so you can see that every time this thing sorts uh, a, a bunch of items the piston dual edge detector here the piston dual edge detector here pulses which gives sort of a, a mechanical feel to the whole design and which is actually why we were able to get rid of that one extra hopper on top. However, like with pretty much all of these furnace arrays, at the moment there is a bit of a bug with them. Uh, as you can see, for some unknown reason, one furnace in the row occasionally won't get any items, and then the rest of the furnaces in the array will be left to pick up the slack. Uh, this is actually a bug with Minecraft. It's not supposed to happen, and it's not a flaw of the design. You can fix this pretty easily by just tearing out this top row of hoppers here, just like so, and then just placing those back the way they were. And now you can see that if we feed that cobblestone back through again, it filters through the system perfectly. The design itself is actually pretty compact, pretty cheap, and really easy to customize to your own needs. So you can see that this version here is only 15 blocks long, five blocks deep, and seven blocks tall. 
You can make this bigger or smaller, as I said, depending on your needs. So if you only wanted a four block wide furnace array, you could quite easily cut that down. You could also make it longer if you wanted. Uh, as I mentioned before, this one only uses eight furnaces, but you could quite easily bump that up to 13 or 14 furnaces. Just need to keep in mind the 15 block redstone limit for this line here. If you want to make any more than 14 furnaces in the array, or 13 furnaces, I can't remember which, you're going to need to employ a, uh, a repeater to extend that signal, and I'm not even sure if that's going to work because of the, uh, the way that these hoppers work with the ticks and such. Again, we'll get into that later. But to be honest, I can't really think of a reason why you'd want to make a version of this much longer than 13 blocks. But just in case you did want a bigger blast furnace, the design itself was initially made to be... Uh, to be mirrored. In fact, this is what I was going for with my initial blast furnace design. You can see that this is two eight furnace arrays side by side, which gives us a 16 furnace array for our blast furnace here. And again, these could be extended quite easily to 13 blocks. So you could very easily have a 26 furnace array in quite a small area and in quite a nice looking design, if I do say so myself. And uh, so as I said, the design is also quite cheap. Uh, obviously, this uh, cost will scale with the size of the design that you want to make. So it'll be less for a shorter design, more for a longer design. But for the eight furnace design you can see in front of me, this is what you're going to need. Uh, you're going to need more or less trap chests depending on what you want to do. They are optional, but recommended. Uh, that's why there's only one of those here. Everything else, the numbers are correct. So obviously, the main cost for the design is going to come from the 42 hoppers here massive massive number of hoppers but considering how quickly this thing's going to smelt you up iron and the amount of hoppers required for competing designs 42 hoppers for what this thing does really isn't all that much and in terms of the other costs it's actually quite a cheap design so let's get to building Alrighty, so because we've already got the left-hand version of the design from the quick build, we're going to be building the right-hand version of the design in today's tutorial, which is going to be a little bit weird for me because everything's going to feel kind of backwards since I've mostly been building the left-hand version of the design. But if you did want to build the left-hand version of the design, everything should be still pretty easy to follow along with. All you'll need to do is just mirror my instructions and everything should work pretty hunky-dory. So... The first thing that you want to do is to figure out where you want to have your output chest. And the reason you want to do this is it's going to orient the rest. It's going to help you orient the rest of your design later on to make sure that you're not going to be overlapping uh, anything important and make sure that you clear out the right amount of space. Uh, but once you've got your output chest sorted, the first step to building the blast furnace is building the core. And so to start the core, uh, on the side of the chest furthest away from the path that you're going to be using to collect your resources later on, you want to start placing hoppers. And you want to place as many hoppers as you're going to use furnaces plus one. So because in today's design we're going to be making eight furnace, we're going to be making an eight furnace version of the blast furnace, uh, we're going to use nine hoppers uh, on the back of the chest here. Just like so. And so these hoppers are going to become our automatic collection line later on. So that means we want to place our furnaces on top of those hoppers so that later on the uh, output can get sucked out through the bottom. And I like to place these hoppers facing backwards just so that you get the, uh, the nicer clean texture for the inside of the design. And it also means that when you turn the design on, you get this cool little flame animation out the back, which uh, kind of looks like some sort of internal combustion going on in the machine or something like that. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, place furnaces across the top of those hoppers, except on that hopper there. Leave that one open. Next, you want to do the coal sorting. And so to sort the coal, you want to place uh, hoppers going into the front of the furnaces like so. And then you want to place hoppers on top of those hoppers. This one on the back doesn't really matter if you have this one facing down or facing off to this side. But the rest of these you want to chain into that back hopper just like so. And then we want to do the same thing for the oars on top. So again, just hoppers going into those furnaces. Hopper on the end going into the hopper below. And then the rest of them just chaining into that first hopper. And for the oars section, you also want to add one extra hopper on the top line, just like so. And that's our core finished. Once you've got the core built, the next step is to start building the splitter around it. 
So the splitter is just a fancy name that I've given to the redstone that controls the hoppers to make sure that they do what we want them to do. So I guess the first step would be to actually explain what we want the hoppers to do. So by default, we want this bottom row of hoppers to be locked so that they can't send or receive any items, which means that when we put items, so ores, into this first hopper here, or more likely a chest on top of the hopper, it's going to start trying to feed items into the system. And the way hoppers work is that every tick they move one item along, unless, of course, they get having items sucked out of them by another hopper, in which case it's going to go at a rate of two items per tick. So... By one tick, this item is gonna this hopper is gonna have an item in it. By two ticks, it's going to push its item into the next hopper and it'll receive an item from the hopper before it. And that's gonna continue all the way along down the line. Now the hoppers would normally prioritize this hopper below them, just because it's uh I don't know, got a bigger opening, I guess. Um, but because these hoppers down the bottom row are locked, that's going to cause the items to start going along this top conveyor. The idea is that once the hop, uh, once this last hopper gets an item, we want all of these hoppers down the bottom to unlock, which should allow the items in these top hoppers, which again, remember, should be one item per hopper, to pass down into these bottom hoppers. And at this point here, most designs would then normally have a third hopper underneath that row of locked hoppers to pull an item out, to pull the item out of them and then pass it on down into the furnace. But as you can see, we're only using two hoppers for the same job. And to do that, we're going to need to use a little bit of tricky redstone. So to start that, what you want to do is place some solid blocks along the side of that bottom row of hoppers and then at the back of that bottom row of hoppers you want to make this shape so it goes two blocks then a block up then another block and then another block up so just like so nice simple easy shape to remember and you want to do that same thing for the coal sorter as well but because the coal sorter is one block lower the structure that you build is also going to be one block lower as you can see so because we want this thing to fire every time that this hopper gets an item, we're going to need to use a comparator coming out of that hopper so that any time this hopper gets an item, even if it's only one, this comparator is going to output a signal strength of one, which is going to go into this redstone dust, into this block, into this repeater, into this block, which is going to power, oops, going to power that piston. And we also need another piston diagonally adjacent from that one and a redstone block on the front of each of those pistons there. So this little piston contraption we've made, just this little one block wide thing here, is what's known as a dual edge detector. So any time that this top piston gets or loses signal, you can see that it powers or cause, causes that bottom piston to pulse, just like so, uh, which is exactly what we want. So. This bottom piston here is what's going to be controlling whether these bottom row of hoppers is locked or unlocked. So to do that, we're going to have a redstone line along this row of blocks so that any time these get power, the block is going to get powered, which is going to power the uh, hopper, which is going to lock it. And so we need to get power from this redstone block to this redstone line, which you could quite easily just do with a block like so and place the redstone dust on top of that. But because we're going to be using slime blocks down here later on, as you can see, we need to use some sort of an immovable block here. So uh, since we've got furnaces on hand and they're pretty cheap, we're going to use those as well. And I like to, uh, again, put those facing backwards just so that the design looks a little bit neater. I didn't do that in the quick build though, just because I was trying to save a little bit of time. But so once you've got that furnace there, you can quite easily just shift click that redstone dust down on top of it. And you can see now this line comes active, which means that by default, those hoppers down the bottom are locked. So that means if we put items into this top hopper here, they should funnel all the way along the top instead of going down into that first lower hopper, just as you can see. Once they get to the end, they send a signal through this comparator, which triggers the system. Now, because when this gets a signal, that bottom piston pulls back, it unlocks all of these hoppers for one tick, which allows the item that's above them to come down into those hoppers, which means that this, uh, this hopper no longer has an item in it, which means the comparator almost instantly stops sending a signal, which, as we saw with this dual edge detector, causes this thing to fire for a second time, which allows the items to pass from these bottom hoppers down into the furnace. 
So if we didn't have that double firing on the first fire, we would get the items going down into that second hopper, just like usual, just like we want. But then the hoppers would be locked, which means they couldn't pass the item down onto the furnace. So this is why most of the minecartless designs use a third row of hoppers down the bottom. That third row of hoppers will be unlocked all the time, which can then pull items out of the locked hoppers and then pass them into the furnaces. But so by using this uh, dual edge detector and getting a double pulse, we get around using that full row of hoppers. But that does throw up a couple of interesting quirks that we're going to get into in a moment. But so all we need to do now is just double the same thing up on the other side. But as you can see, you do get these two pieces of redstone dust connecting. So you also want to place a block on top of that piece of redstone dust just to cut those two off so that they don't short circuit. Once you've got both sides of the splitter in, we're going to really quickly throw in our XP line. So all you need to do is come to where the furnaces are. And so behind the hopper, so... Uh, one block behind it and one block below it, so diagonally adjacent. We want to start placing solid blocks only as far as, the ho uh, as far as the furnaces go. And then on those solid blocks, you want to place redstone torches under those hoppers. So those redstone torches by default are going to have these bottom hoppers locked, which means that they're not going to be pulling out the finished products from the, uh, the furnaces. So this is XP mode. And we want to be able to turn XP mode off. So you want to bring a redstone, a line of redstone dust along the top of these blocks, except on that last block there. We don't want to put one there, for again, for reasons I'll get into later on. Uh, instead, we're going to go around that block by jerry-rigging it a little bit. Now, I like to put down uh, solid blocks to put my redstone on just because it's best practice, and you should get into the habit of doing that too if you don't already. Uh, but So we want to put two pieces of redstone dust down like so, and one repeater pointing into this block. So the repeater, uh, when we place our lever here and you know, flick this thing on and off, uh, it's going to send power into this repeater, which is going to power this block, which will turn off that torch. And then because this block is getting power, this redstone dust will get power and that'll go along the whole line. So that's pretty much our XP line finished. Okay, so that's your blast furnace just about finished, and it is it is technically functional at this stage. In fact, this is pretty much the state that my uh, first prototype was in when I considered it finished. But there are still a few minor upgrades that we can make to the thing, and a few not-so-minor upgrades that we really should make. Uh, so let's get to doing those now. Uh, so the first upgrade we're going to do is we're going to cover these hoppers here with some sort of a solid block. And I'm just going to use glass for the back row of hoppers, just because that reminds me that coal goes in there. I mean, of course, you can use any fuel source you want, but coal is the most readily used. So, yeah, black equals coal. And mostly I just think the glass looks cooler. The reason we're putting the, uh, the solid blocks on top of all of the hoppers here is that uh, if any items that either aren't smeltable or aren't fuel get into the system, they are going to start jamming up the system. So for example, if you're building with like half slabs close to this thing, you break some out and they fall down onto the hoppers, that'll get sucked into the system and jam it up pretty badly. So to avoid that happening, it's a really good idea to cover all of your hoppers with some sort of solid blocks, except for this front one and optionally that front one as well. I recommend chucking down a trap chest on those. And then that way, uh, when you go to put items into your system, if you accidentally click on something that you shouldn't be putting into the system, or if you just want to preview what you're going to put into the system before it actually goes in there, the, lock, uh, the, the trap chest will let you do that because when this thing's open, it's going to be locking that hopper. Uh, I think that's... Uh, yeah, that's the way I want everything. Um, but when it closes, then it's going to start funneling stuff through the system. So that's also another good upgrade to make. The next upgrade we want to make is that mobs can actually spawn on top of your redstone here. And the last thing we want is for a creeper to spawn on top of this stuff, drop down and blow you up with all of your hard redstoning work. So uh, what I like to do is place half slabs down on top of all of your redstone dust. Now there are still uh, other spawnable spots around the machine. So for example, I'm pretty sure on top of redstone blocks they can spawn. Same with on these pistons, I think. And definitely on these solid blocks here and this, these on the top. Uh, you could put torches around the place, but I think that makes the machine look a little bit gaudy. You could also hide um, glowstone or glow, put some glowstone lamps around the place. Completely up to you, but uh, so far I haven't had anything spawn on this just with these... Um, 
half slabs. And the half slabs are also uh, more cosmetic than anything. I feel like they uh, add a fair bit of shape to the design uh, and make it look a lot nicer. So there's that as well. So those are our minor upgrades out of the way. Now for the major upgrade. So I mentioned before that this pulsing line was going to give us a bit of a, a weird issue. And so I can demonstrate that for you now. So you can see that these uh, furnaces here all pretty much have an even distribution of items. Remember we put a stack of cobblestone in there before. Should have divided up into eight equally. But as you can see, we've only got seven in most of these furnaces. We've got eight in this last one. And that's just because uh, if however much... Uh, if however many resources is going through this system doesn't divide equally into how many furnaces you've got, then any remainder is going to end up in the last few furnaces. So if, it, if we had a remainder of three, these last three furnaces would have one extra item than the rest of the furnaces in the array. The reason these furnaces are out of whack, though, is this first furnace here, because of some little weird uh, idiosyncrasy of the design, it's getting double the amount of items that most of the other furnaces are getting. And the reason for that is this double pulsing. This might be a little bit confusing to explain, but bear with me. So basically what happens is when all of these, uh, pist uh, when all of these hoppers have an, a single item in them, as usual, that comparator is going to fire, which is going to unlock all of the bottom hoppers for one tick. Okay, so that's going to cause the items that are in these hoppers to go down. This much we've covered already. However, one tick later, this line is going to pulse again for one tick. And so what this is going to do, it's, as we know, it's going to allow the items to go from these hoppers into the furnaces below, but... There's nothing to stop this hopper to continue funneling items into the system, right? So we have this thing pulses, those items go away, this thing locks again, this hopper will send an item into this one, this line pulses again, which funnels the items down into the, the furnaces, which also causes the item that's the, the single item that's in this hopper to go down into this hopper and then down in the furnace. So I hope that kind of makes sense. So that basically means what we need to try and do is anytime this is pulsing, we need to lock this hopper. So that's done pretty simply by bringing this redstone signal out by one. And then are oh, we going to need a redstone torch? So we'll take that one. So by default, that redstone torch is going to be off, which is going to allow items to flow through our system. Anytime this line is on, that redstone torch is going to turn on, which will stop this item from sending or receiving, which will stop this hopper from sending or receiving any items. We need to do more or less the same thing on the coal sorter side as well as on the ore sorter side, because the coal sorter side is going to get the same issue. However, because we've got the uh, hoppers set up differently, for example, you can see that there's this one extra hopper on the outside there, we have to do something a little bit different. And this is pretty much the reason why we do have that extra hopper there is because if we didn't and we had to set up this side the same as we're going to do this one, we just couldn't do it. The, the two lines would overlap. So to get these two uh, fixes close enough together or as close together as we need them, we need to set these two up slightly differently. So what you want to do on the coal sort of side is you don't actually want to bring this line out by one. You want to just place a block against that redstone dust, place your torch just like so, and then Against this hopper, you want to place an upside down half slab and place a piece of redstone dust on the top of it there. So what this is going to do, it's going to do pretty much the exact same thing that this torch does. But instead of just locking the top hopper, this is also simultaneously going to lock the bottom hopper. Uh, so now this means that um, this will work the way that we want it to, except there's always going to be one piece of coal stuck in this bottom furnace. But I mean, that's no big issue. We can sort that out ourselves, which means that this, this system isn't 100% accurate at splitting items, but it's like 99%, something like that. Now, this redstone dust on the uh, half slab is also why we couldn't put a redstone dust on this block here. You'll see if we put that piece of redstone dust there, this, what's normally a, uh, oops, 
Well, didn't mean to destroy that. Uh, oh, man, tricky. Um, yeah, if, if we destroy this piece of redstone dust, you can see that this is a, a dot of redstone. Whereas if we put redstone dust there, it becomes a line of redstone. When this is a dot of redstone, if it gets power, it will lock this hopper. If this is a line of redstone, it won't lock this hopper. We need to have a block against the hopper and the redstone dust on top of it. But then, you know, we couldn't lock this one. So, yeah, that, that's the way we need to set up this side. But now that's working 100%. And the only other little upgrade we really need to do is add this front facade on so that we hide those uh, the hoppers and the torches below and we can also add in our path here. The last step to making our blast furnace is to put in what I call the splitter override. So the only goal of the splitter really is to divide up items between these bottom hoppers. It's not actually to pass items down into the, the furnaces ironically enough. The reason being is that, for example, if you were to put a stack of coal, a stack of iron ore and a stack of gold ore into this chest, the stack of, uh, the first stack that you put in is going to funnel into these furnaces with no problem whatsoever, but then when it starts to uh, funnel the next set of items through, it's not going to be able to put it into the furnace, obviously, because those items don't stack, which means the items are going to stay in these hoppers and once these hoppers stop dividing items, this line's not going to pulse anymore, which means that any items that are in this bottom row, when this locks, they're going to stay in there pretty much. Um, so yeah, if you put in an excessively large load or a, a mixed load or something like that, or if there's some sort of a malfunction with the machine, sometimes you'll get items jammed in these hoppers and it's nice. It, it's a nice option to be able to flood the system or do what I call a dirty burn. Um, so the way we do that is pretty simple. We just need to get these redstone blocks somehow away from this redstone line, and we do that with slime blocks. So very easily, just place a slime block on the end of, uh, or on the bottom of either of those pieces of redstone, on the bottom of either of those redstone blocks, and then you want to place sticky pistons one block below each of those slime blocks facing up. And this is the part where it's weird. I've got to do it kind of backwards. Uh, I think that's what I want to do. So you want to place an L of redstone dust like so, going into a solid block. So just like that. Uh, and then I also like to cover that up with half slabs. And you want to place a solid block on top of this one and your lever. And so you can see when we activate the lever, those sticky pistons go up to the slime block. When we lower the piston, or flick that lever, the piston lowers, drags the redstone block down, which means that the splitter is now automatically turned off. Uh, and we can just turn that back on just like so. And you can see uh, the half slabs do some weird thing, but I, I kind of like it actually. It, it's kind of like an indicator showing you uh, when this half slab's up, it means power's going to the splitter. And when the half slab's down, you know, items are going through the system, I guess. I don't know. A little bit of a weird memory trick, but... Does, does the job for me. Finally, just whack a uh, lever on that block there before we forget, just for our uh, XP line, and you are done, my friends. You have yourself a brand spanking new blast furnace. Now, if you make a dual design like this, personally, I like to just come over the back here and add a couple of half slabs, just because it connects the design up, makes it look like one big machine instead of two separate machines. But yeah, that's your blast furnace done, guys. Um, so like I said, the thing is 99% accurate at splitting items between the furnaces. It is pretty cheap when it comes to hoppers. And as you've seen, it is actually really easy to build, doesn't take that many resources, and is pretty easy to operate. These torches will also act as indicator lights. When the machine's doing nothing but is ready to be used, they'll be off. Anytime the machine is sorting items, you'll see that the lights will pulse. These pulse in line with the pistons up the back. So sometimes you can't hear them, you can't tell the machine's going off, but you will see these lights pulsing so that you know that the, that the machine's doing stuff. Or if you have the splitter turned off, meaning that items won't get sorted through the system, both lights will turn on, indicating that the system is either malfunctioning or is turned off. If you still have any questions about the design, or any suggestions for tutorials that I should do in the future, please feel free to let me know down in the comments section down below, and I'll do my best to either get back to you or do your idea for a design at some stage in the future. Uh, 
also, if you've got the time, like I said, don't forget to check out those videos in linked in the description that inspired this tutorial. Uh, there's a lot of good content in there. Other than that, guys, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed the video. And guys, finally, if you did find this tutorial useful, do leave the video a like as it does help my channel out a fair bit and potentially consider subscribing or favoriting if uh, you haven't already. But that's it for me today, guys. My name's Static and I will catch you next time. Let's say I have red but we'll get into that in a little bit. It's not really that much of an issue. And it does come with a bunch of the features that the other designs have. So for example, we've got indicator lights here on the front, which also serve a purpose, which again we'll get into later. And you've got an XP mode down the front here. So you can see those torches there. That means that those uh, auto collection hoppers are currently locked. So this is an XP mode, meaning you can take the uh, finished products out yourself to get the XP and you can switch them off simply like so. Another cool little faux feature of this design is that it's actually, it actually seems mechanical, uh, which was something that I was going for when I designed this thing. I wanted it to actually look like a working machine. And so you can see that every time this thing sorts uh, a, a bunch of items, the piston dual edge detector here the piston dual edge detector here, Pulse. Cheapest minecartless furnace array that I was able to find on YouTube uses three hoppers per furnace on top to divide the ores, one hopper per furnace underneath for the auto collection mode, and generally didn't come with anything for sorting out the coals. You had to do that manually. Uh, you can see with this design though, that I've managed to cut it down so that it only uses two hoppers per furnace on top to divide the ores, two hoppers per furnace on the side to divide the coal, and one hopper per furnace underneath for the collection mode. So because we are able to cut down uh, on one hopper per furnace on top here, that meant for only one hopper per furnace extra, we are able to add in coal sorting as well, which is pretty handy. Now this design isn't necessarily as hands-free as those other slightly more expensive designs, What's going on guys and girls, Static here and welcome to another in-depth Minecraft tutorial where I show you how to build something cool and then try and explain to you how and why the thing actually works. Today I'm pretty excited to be doing this tutorial because we're going to be building what you can see in front of us here. This thing is an automatic uh, super smelter or an industrial furnace array or what I'm referring to as the blast furnace and this particular one here is actually the blast furnace that I built in the recent quick build video where we built this thing in less than five minutes. Uh, so if you do have a pretty decent grasp on uh, redstone or if uh, you've got a little bit of a short attention span, I definitely recommend checking out that quick build as in less than five minutes you'll get pretty much all the information you'll need to replicate one of these. Uh, however, there are a couple of uh, little novel mechanics going on here and a few uh, interesting little quirks of the machine that I'm going to explain throughout the tutorial. So if you've got the time, definitely hang around. So furnace arrays like this definitely aren't a new design in Minecraft. In fact, they've been around for almost as long as hoppers have been in the game. And this design itself was actually inspired by a couple of other designs and uh, little tutorials here and there. So I'm going to link all of the videos that inspired or informed this video down the down in the description and in the credits section at the end of the video. So if you get a chance, definitely give those a look as they're all pretty short, informative and entertaining. But for those of you who haven't seen one of these industrial furnace arrays before or who aren't entirely sure what it's used for, the basic idea of the machine is that it divides all of your ores and in this particular version all of your fuels up between a series of furnaces and by dividing those fuels and ores equally uh, you divide the, the workload up between the furnaces, which means they chew through them a lot quicker and you can get through entire chests full of resources in no time at all. The problem with these designs is that generally they take up a lot of iron. Uh, this design is no different, it does take a fair bit of iron, but compared to other designs out there it takes a lot less. The